All right, all right. Welcome back. Jumping in the next one. I don't know. Was this part 22 at this point, I guess? Uh, got some major parts back finally. Boop. Transmission. She's in the house. So uh, skip the intro. Let's get right into it. Let's see what we got. Okay, real quick before I get into the rest of this video, um, something I want to talk about real quick. Uh, when I started this video, I didn't exactly know what direction this was going to go. Um, but now since I've got parts in for things I've been waiting on, um, I just want to address, um, yes, everything's being built for my 87 Ford Ranger, but everything you're going to see forward in here um, will also pertain to anybody um, early Bronco or just anyone that's got a C4 and a Dana 20 transfer case. I haven't found... Um, anything else really on YouTube or the internet in regards to putting together this combination and even according to uh, uh, Northwest Fabrication in Canada, this is not a real common uh, combination. So uh, this video now is going to morph into a how-to on my doubler that finally showed up. So um, again, anyone with a C4, uh, mine was a was from an early Bronco setup. It's now been converted with the advanced adapters. Uh, they call it the Dana 300 uh, tail housing kit and the output shaft. So um, if you got an early Bronco and you're uh, wondering about a doubler, this would be a combination that uh, should interest you. So anyway, let's get back to the video. Um, hopefully this, uh, this video is useful for uh, more people in the future. So anyway, back to it. All right, there it is. C4, all rebuilt. She's got a clean bill of health now. I already went ahead and threw all the brackets on for the winter shifter cable. That's all done. This new bell housing is actually a 157 tooth versus the 164 that I had the previous setup. So I have a new 157 tooth SFI approved flex plate, matching index plate for the starter. Hoping this will actually give me a little more uh, header clearance, especially on the passenger side. Um, I went ahead and threw the new sensor in the pan for the Speed Hut trans temp gauge. And uh, the trans builder just ended up leaving the vacuum modulator just in the case just to fill the hole. Um, it doesn't do anything. The trans is full manual reverse pattern, so there is uh, nothing that that thing is doing. So torque converter. B&M whole shot is advertised as a 2000 stall. I have never seen a converter that tight, that small. A um, little nervous because it's a lot of work to throw all this together and it turns out that that thing stalls way more than 2000. Uh, I'm going to be pissed, but uh, I guess I'm going to trust them that it is what it is, it's advertised as because I, I definitely want a little more than stock. 2000 I figured would be perfect. I don't want to go too loose. So uh, cross your fingers. Hopefully that thing works as advertised. Uh, the interior. Done some more work in here. Threw the driver's seat in. Um, <laughs> I, I can't lie. I've literally just sat in here for like 30 minutes last night just feeling it out. I just love how everything fits and how everything feels and how everything looks. Unfortunately, the one downside is the driver's seat, seat tracks, um, it'll only slide forward like one click. Um, the seat frame still hits the uh, triple stick shifter base, even though I cut that notch out of the corner there. Still not enough. Um, so whatever. Um, it's fine for me, and I still think uh, the wife, she won't have any problems, um, even if we just got to sit up a little bit. She can, she'll still be able to drive this. I think it'll be all right. And I did get my new JB Fab hand throttle in, which I like a lot better than the old TerraFlex one that I was using. This is pretty neat. I didn't even know this thing existed, but uh, it just operates by twisting. You twist it, it pulls on the cable, which raises the idle. You can lock it, snug that down so it can't move, or uh, you can leave it loose. You can... Uh, Basically, uh, set the idle anywhere you want, and when you're done, you just press this button, and it returns to base idle. 
pretty cool piece. I'm excited to use that. Something different. I think it's in a good uh, position, especially with, you know, I was playing with it last night, sitting in there with my arm on the armrest, you know, using the trans shifter and that and everything. It's, everything is just like very ergonomically correct. I really like it. It feels good. Everything's an easy reach. So, uh, yeah, so far, all that's a win. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> those last clips. Uh, filmed those a month ago. I've been slacking. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. The last, last 30 days have been wild over here with all the crap going on. I've been sick. I actually busted a toe that's literally taken three weeks to get to the point where it doesn't hurt like hell just to walk on it. Um, that really slowed me down, and uh, I got uh, tied up in building a, a whole chicken coop thing. That's a whole other story for another day we ain't getting into. Uh, but anyway, month later, here we are. <clears throat> I know I said in the previous clips I was still waiting on my doubler. Well, my doubler's here. Yes. So let's take a look, see what just showed up. Uh, got some major components in the last two days, so... Uh, I think I'm finally ready to get back on this thing here now, so sorry about the delay. So, there it is. My Northwest Fab Eco Box. There's my doubler. There's the planetary, the 2.71 to 1 uh, that's going to go inside of it. I did have to purchase a different driven gear for the planetary. You can see there's a length difference. I did have a, uh, well, I'll show you here, on the transmission, there was a, uh, a depth problem where the uh, input of that planetary would not go in all the way to reach the seal. So, unbeknownst to me, there are three different uh, NP231 transfer cases with different length of the uh, input shaft, and I had the wrong one. So, luckily, Northwest Fab... Uh, I've been dealing with Chris over there. It's been super helpful. Set me up with the right part that I needed. So now I just got to swap. Pop that snap ring off. Swap these out. And then I'm good to go there. Um, I have yet to uh, download all the instructions on this. So don't know exactly what I'm getting into with the doubler yet. But uh, ain't too worried about it. Should, uh, should go pretty well. So here pretty soon. That will be bolted to that. And then that will be bolted to that. Getting excited. Okay, so here is the Northwest Fab EcoBox doubler. So this is the, the do-it-yourself version of this. <clears throat> they sell what's called the, their black box, which is essentially this whole thing already put together. Um, I save myself a little bit of money by going with the do-it-yourself one where you have to get your own donor transfer case to steal some of the guts out of it to put into this. I kind of like the idea of that so I know the inner workings and how this thing and how it all works, how it goes together. So if there's ever a problem down the road, I'm not going to be nervous about tearing into this thing since I built it. So. I like this option. Like I said, it did save me a little bit of money, probably 700 bucks when it was all said and done by going this route. So what I have here, um, a while ago I had picked up a NP231. Uh, like I said in the previous clip, there are <clears throat> three different versions of the 231 and it all comes down to the length of this input shaft. This is what would slide onto the output of the transmission. Um, essentially this piece right here on my Dana 20 that would be this um, it was shorter than what they require for this setup so I did have to buy the longer version of it from Northwest Fab you can get them a lot of other places I found online but they're all pretty much the same price so basically it was just uh, taking this little snap ring pull the snap ring out this whole drive gear comes out there's a little uh, thrust bearing in this retaining plate just swap everything over, and now I have the uh, the proper length input for my planetary. This essentially is what's going to double my low gear. This is that two two point seven one to one uh, gear ratio. So this is what's going to go inside here. 
some of the parts that I already know <clears throat> that got to be swapped out. I already robbed the uh, input bearing on the 231. That's going to go into the one half of the, the case. The uh, front seal and bearing retainer that's off the 231, you need to reuse that. This is kind of loosely bolted in place. Um, they give you, this is a new uh, main shaft. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pull this out of my Dana 20. I'm going to have to swap out this one, my main drive gear, and everything's going to swap over to this one. Then this is what's going to basically engage with the, uh, this is all going to kind of engage together here. So I'm already kind of understanding it just by looking at the parts all laid out here. Um, did have to reuse this, uh, what they call it, the shift collar from the 231. This is going to engage. Here's their, their shift fork. Oops, just fell out. So this is the shift fork for the doubler. It engages on that, and that's what's going to essentially go from neutral to engage. So this part here gets reused. So I think I'm going to take this time. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to go on their website. They have all their all the directions. They have directions on how to tear this down, the 231, and what parts you're going to need and how to get them out. Um, also, there's a big ring gear inside that uh, this rides inside of. Um, I have to get that out, and it goes inside here. So that, they say there's a trick in their directions on how to get that out. So I'm going to uh, read up on that and see if I can get that out. All right, so the next step is I need to get that ring gear out. That needs to get pressed into the new half of the doubler case. So in the directions from Northwest, they uh, indicate what you want to do basically is uh, carefully cut into the case on uh, both sides and split it to get that gear out. So that's what I'm going to do. See if it'll split. Okay, I cut full all the way through there, and then uh, just went deep enough there. Hit it with the chisel a couple times, and she broke right in half. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut it, flip it over. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side here, and then that'll release the ring gear. careful with it all right success got the ring gear out I'm gonna clean it all up get all this uh, aluminum shavings off of it so now this they say in the directions this kind of this narrower edge this has to go down because they're worried about when you press it back into the new case any um, aluminum shavings or whatever this is going to cut off they want to fall down into this groove here 
so it doesn't get between the ring gear and the new case and hold it up out of place. So that's what we're going to do. All right, now that I got the ring gear out, so now I got to go over to my press. This has got to get pressed down inside here. Pretty much lines up, centers itself. So I'm going to go over to my press, put it on the table upside down, press down here, and uh, hopefully she'll be uh, sitting in there nice and tight like it's supposed to be. So I'll go do that over my press. I'll be back. Okay, so I got the ring gear pressed in using my big press. Kind of a pain in the ass. You can flip it over, get it started, but it only goes so far because there's this raised register. So I had to get creative around here. Real important, get it seated all the way in. So now, planetary can go in. And before you press the uh, bearing in, you got to do a little check here. Let me get this engaged real quick. Okay. So there's a the planetary engaged in the ring gear. If my uh, camera assistant could come over here. So in the directions they say the uh, you can't have more than a quarter of an inch stick out on this shaft to this mounting flange, otherwise it'll bottom out inside the input to the planetary and that'll put excessive preload on the main shaft of the transmission and it'll wear out thrust bearings and stuff inside the transmission. So with this just loosely put together we're going to slide it on and see if this mating surface closes up tight without any resistance. Perfect. There's not, no gasket in there yet, so I'll have a few more thousandths once there's a gasket in there. So it looks like everything's good. I don't have to trim down the end of the uh, output shaft of the trans, so it looks like this is going to work fine. So I know this is good. Now I can go back. I can press in the bearing and put the uh, clips on to hold those in, so we're good. Okay, now that I've confirmed everything's good with the input of the transfer case to the output of the trans, I got a nice, um, everything bolts, will, will bolt up fine. Next step is, is the input bearing that came out of the 231. This needs to get pressed into here. You're going to reuse the original snap ring around the bearing. You're just going to press it in. There is a a little groove for the snap ring. So we're just going to go ahead, we're going to get this started. I'm going to try with my mallet here first. Yep, it's going in fine. So I'm not quite all the way down. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put the snap ring on. So now my snap ring is on, now I can just go ahead and tap this home and it'll end up where it needs to be. You can feel when it's seated all the way, the, the sound of the thud changes, so there we go. Bearing is in, bearing is seated, everything feels good. So now. We're going to slide this over the planetary. And then the planetary, if you'll see, there's another groove just on the other side of the bearing. That's for another clip. That clip is right here. So this one is going to be fun to get on. I would uh, if I would have read the directions prior to tearing all the donor transfer case apart, I would have been a lot more careful <laughs> pulling some of these these uh, pieces apart. If I would have realized I was going to be reusing them, I didn't. So this one got a little bit a little bit mangled. 
I think I'm going to go put it over in the press, kind of flatten it out first before I go forcing it on here. Just to, just to ensure there ain't no problems with it. Alright, so I got the little clip on here. Just going to go ahead and drive it down. All right, there it is. Planetary is assembled. Pretty easy. Not too bad. All right, hold on to the next step. Okay, so now the next step is going to be the uh, bearing and the seal retainer. So lay this down. This is not asymmetrical bolt pattern it only goes on one way it looks like there's some oil feed channels that are drilled through the case and it looks like there's a little notch where it can uh, feed oil to get to the front side of the bearing so that obviously is pretty critical to get that right so I'm gonna go clean this up real quick on my uh, wire wheel get this clean put a little bead of silicone on it then this will just go ahead and slide right over kind of so it should self center its you know it'll self center itself of the seal so anyway let me go get this cleaned up real quick get some silicone and we'll get this button all right i'm gonna clean these surfaces up some brake clean make sure she's nice and clean same with the bearing retainer Good there. They provide you with some cap screws so you don't reuse the original hardware from the transfer case. Doesn't say anything about it. Um, I'm a firm believer in blue Loctite, so I'm going to put a little dab on each of these because these are definitely not something you're going to get too easily if these were ever to come loose. Actually, if they were to come loose, you would never know. So, let's do a little thin bead here not gonna need a lot most of it's gonna squish out anyway so little goes a long way definitely don't fill these little channels where the oil is supposed to get through you don't want so much there that you block that off so so I'm gonna assume I have the two there's two channels here this oil is supposed to go through so I got two options on which way this is gonna go on so I will try this one first see if it lines up I can already see that it doesn't, so we're going to go 180 degrees to the other one. And there it is. Can't remember what it is, but in the directions they do, uh, they do give you a little uh, torque setting for these. Off the top of my head, I can't remember what they are. I'm just going to go ahead and get them cinched down here. Judging by the size of the fastener, I'm going to say it's probably going to be around 20, 25 foot-pounds. Don't quote me on that.
All right, and with that, the input side of the doubler is now done. So now moving on to the back half here. So let's uh, reference the directions one more time, and then we'll jump into that. Okay, on this side of the case, we have the shift fork, comes with it, and then this is the, uh, I don't know, shift collar from the 231. This is going to engage like so, and then the main shaft will go in and it'll basically get seated down to that sealed bearing. There's the main shaft installed. Just took some light tapping with my uh, rubber mallet to get that all seated inside there. So next, I have to pull this back out on my Dana 20 and get the drive gear off of that. The drive gear will then slide on. It's got a clip. These are where those uh, 13 needle bearings inside the Dana 20 will ride. So this is going to be a a little bit of a delicate process to get this swapped over but it looks like this register here is what's going to go inside the hole here this whole bearing retainer piece will not be used so this mating surface will be for this so and that is a uh, non-symmetrical bolt pattern so it only goes on one way so we have to uh, fish that out that's always a good time because there's really no good way to grab it so let me uh, get that out, and then we'll get the parts swapped over to the, this input. Oh, actually, this is the output. My bad. All right, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna end this video here. This is probably gonna end up being a two, if not possibly three, part video on the doubler install. Um, I went into a little more detail than what I thought I would, so I know I'm already at 30 minutes now, and. I'm not trying to force y'all to sit through 30 minutes of this. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll just call this part one. It's basically the uh, input side of the doubler. That portion's done, so I'll pick it up in the next video of assembling the, uh, the output section of the doubler and affixing it to the Dana 20. And then uh, probably the third part will actually be installing it in the truck, which uh, pretty much will be specific to my truck only, but still, anyway. Yeah, so anyway, thanks for watching. Again, um, early Bronco guys, any of y'all with a, a, a C4 and a Dana 20, as far as I know, this is the only option for a doubler out there for that combination. So, uh, yeah, kind of a really cool option. It's not that expensive. Um, like I said, I bought the Eco Box, which is a do-it-yourself version, which was only like $1,000. And uh, I had to pay an extra $200 for the right uh, gear, the driven gear that went in the planetary. Because I, I just, that was my fault. I bought a $100 broken uh, MP231 and it was just the wrong one. It had the wrong input shaft. So um, I have, you know, $300 into that. So um, if I would have bought the right MP231 to start with, that would have saved me that cost. So uh, whatever, it is what it is. So anyway. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, share this, tell your Bronco friends, tell your C4 buddies. There's a, there's another option out there, and uh, we'll see you shortly. Um, I'm gonna jump right into part two here and uh, get this start to get this stuff together. So, anyway, thank you. Bye bye.